Today we are visiting St David's Bishop's Palace. This is the ruin of a medieval palace that sits slap bang next to St David's Cathedral in the city of St David's. Although what is here today largely dates from the 13th and 14th centuries, the site was in use as early as the 6th century when a monastery was built here. Prior to the arrival of the Normans in the 11th century, that monastery was ransacked on at least 10 occasions by Norse raiders. When they finally arrived, the Normans appointed a bishop and built a Mott and Bailey fort to protect the site less than half a mile down the River Allen and later a stone defensive wall. Not every place we go to has the delicate work still there because it's gone, neither nicked or eroded or whatever over the years, but this still does. Up there is a really lovely little circular pattern where a glass window would have been. Bishop's palaces seem to be incredibly ornate. There are lots of arches, lots of walkways, lots of little places to go, all sorts of things like that in abundance. It would have been an absolutely stunning place to visit when it was still whole. So if you're posh and important enough, then you could stay here. This is the great chamber. So this serves as a bedroom and sitting room for your, your posh guests. This is the chamber bit, this is a good sized bedroom. This is bigger than most people's living rooms, it has to be said. And then over there, that's your great hall. So entertaining space, which I'm gonna guess, dining area and that sort of thing. Places where people come to be entertained, wined and dine, shall we say. And of course, off the great chamber, you need a great privy. off the privy and you have a spiral staircase that leads to other chambers and then I wonder where. Well, in answer to that question the answer is here and it literally just brings you out into the roof and you get a view out over the palace and there's the cathedral and the surrounding countryside. Quite what purpose this served I don't know but it's an impressive sight. Maybe that's what it was all about. I mean, if you're thinking about it, it comes off the posh bit where the guests were. So maybe this was a form of entertainment. This window here and the one that you can see through the middle of this one lead into the undercroft and the fact that they've got these really ornate windows just into the undercroft shows you just how much aesthetics played a part in this place. Everything was designed to be lovely looking, to be relaxing. Put your feet up from a hard day of being bishop. I don't know what being a bishop entails to be honest, but this seems a nice way to kick back and relax after any job. The undercrofts here are amazing. They go on for ages. They've got room after room after room after room, all kind of higgledy-piggledy layout-wise. And apparently they reckon that this was also possibly used as servants' quarters. And they've all got vaulted ceilings. I wonder if they divvied up the rooms depending on what they were storing. So wine, cheese, then perhaps some left over for the servants. But yes, I'm really quite impressed with this layout because the undercrofts I've seen so far are just generally one long hall shaped thing. But this is just a bit of a labyrinth. I can't really do it justice to describe it. You'd have to come and see it for yourself because it's a good place to bring your kids to explore. So where would a bishop's palace be without a chapel? In fact, this was one of a number of chapels too, at least, because this was the chapel for posh people, for the revered guests. The bishop and the staff used to use one over by the gatehouse, apparently. So this is a better lit room. It's also an undercroft and it's got a demonstration piece which plays noise and tells you a bit of information about the place, how it was built, etc. And then they've got these stairs, which I'm going to climb now and see what's up them. <laughs> Turns out, not much. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, if you're entertaining, you're going to need a kitchen. And this is just what that is. So you've got a great big fireplace behind me. And over there, you've got a bread oven. And then over here, there's a sluice thing for dipping your waist down. And, and you've got access to the storage rooms underneath. And, and it opens out into the main part of the palace, just next door to the Great Hall, which is an ideal position for it to be, really. It really is a good sized kitchen. I reckon plenty of quaffing and the eating of roasted beasts went on next door, and it was all cooked in here. Sounds like a splendid thing. I said in the undercroft of many chambers that most undercrofts are a really long hall, perhaps with a chamber at either end. And this here is that hall. So not only did they have all those different chambers, which possibly some of them would have been taken up by people, they've also got this really long hall as well. The point is, they have an awful lot of storage space here. Now this is the bishop's bedroom, really. It's got a good sized bedroom. It's got its own ensuite bathroom. This is really the only private space the bishop had here. Everywhere else he was expected to, to meet with people, but here he could truly be on his own. It's got everything you could possibly need. It's got its own ensuite bathroom. It's got a fireplace. It's got windows. It would be a nice toasty place to be. So what did you think? I like it. There's an awful lot here to see. I mean, there's there's uh, there's lots and lots of undercrofts, which is great. I thoroughly enjoyed those. There's I lots of I'd overcrofts yeah. too. <laughs> I thought I'd explore it all on the under the crofts, but I hadn't because there are more of them. But there are all sorts of ones. There are the hall ones, there are the windy places. I mean, you, you've seen it. You know, if you've all, watched this all stuff. over the shop. Yeah. Anyway, so there's there's that. So the, yeah, there is. It's great for sort of little kids. I suppose there's lots of buttons to press and lots of information and it's big space to run around in and lots of things to explore and learn and yeah, it's a yeah. it's a good it's a good one this it is i mean i still prefer castles <laughs> yes let's let's not you know let's just not mention the fact that we prefer castles no i quite like their ornate intricate bits because most of the places that you see that are in ruin you don't have those more delicate bits intact and yet here there are still some of there are left. indeed so that's quite good on that note if you like this video don't forget to click that subscribe button we shall see you next time ttfn